Naturalistic observation is one technique for research, and it involves studying a human or a non-human animal in the natural environment. An example of this comes from Jane Goodall's work studying chimpanzees in Gombe. Basically, she would go out into the field every day in the natural environment of chimpanzees, and she would do everything she could not to affect the behavior of the animals so that she could observe and record their behavior. You don't wear perfume, you wear clothes with dull colors, you don't make sudden movements, and the idea is that eventually the animals will no longer react to your presence as a researcher, that they will habituate to your presence. And over many decades of work, we've learned a great deal about chimpanzees due to Jane Goodall's work. For instance, we know about their parenting and how they make their beds at night and what they eat and how they interact with each other. And it's all very fascinating. Another example of naturalistic observation, this time with humans, might be an investigation of courtship behavior. And so in a classroom, I'd normally ask you, where does courtship take place? Where do people meet each other for potential romantic relationships in their natural habitats? Students typically say parties, bars, the quad <laughs> on campus. So think about this. I could either do it with paper and pencil, observing and recording behavior in a systematic way, or I might go out there with a video camera. But again, you don't want to interfere with the natural ongoing behavior of your study participants. And here, there's another concern as well, ethical concerns, a topic that we'll be discussing later on. I think that it would be very hard to get permission from an ethics review board to videotape people for purposes of research in a bar or a club for purposes of science. Not that it can't be done, but it would be very difficult to design a study where you're not violating people's privacy. So by definition, naturalistic observation takes place in the human or non-human animal's natural habitat. Think about the benefits of conducting this type of study. It's often useful to study behavior in a laboratory or some other type of artificial environment. But to be able to understand or observe, at least, behavior as it occurs in the natural environment is incredibly important. We just need to understand the limitations of research using naturalistic observation. For instance, if you're out in the field and you're observing a chimpanzee and you are observing and recording behavior, what you're doing is recording a stream of behavior. This occurred, this occurred, this occurred, or these behaviors occurred this many times or lasted for these durations. Are you really understanding the causes of behavior in this type of situation? You know what events occurred before the behavior of interest, but you do not have the opportunity to test whether or not they're actually causal, that those events cause the behavior of interest to you as a researcher. We'll be talking about other data collection techniques that will allow you to identify causes and effects in a moment.